so little portion we had not covered last time about the particulate formation but you can still go back to slides those I am sure will be loaded by today. Okay, then you can have a look but I want to quickly move to something else that is about the atmospheric chemistry. You remember we have been talking all through uh, that in the sense that we have three things S, T and R. Okay, so it's transport and uh, receptor. Okay, we will be just working back and forth. Okay, and so we want to quickly do about the atmospheric reaction as to once the pollutants are in the atmosphere, what can they do? Can they do good things? Can they do the bad things? Or uh, they, they may not do anything. Okay, but we are talking more of the <coughs> chemical transformation of the pollutants. Okay. And then depends on many many things, but we will try to go as much as we need to go really, but atmospheric chemistry can be a big subject in itself. Okay. So, but we won't go that far because we like to cover something like in two to three lectures and then when we look at the atmospheric chemistry and what is important that again it can it can affect the, the people, it can affect the receptor and then it can affect sometimes in the positive sense because atmospheric chemistry can not only create problems and serious problems, it can also sometimes reduce problem because they are able to scavenge out the pollutants, scavenge out the harmful things and can produce something very uh, benign or not so harmful. Okay? So, there can be positive effects of course, the, it affects uh, the stratospheric ozone which is being formed in the stratosphere all the time that is a good thing and then it can also remove some of the toxic substances from the atmosphere for example, the OH radicals and the other things it can negative effects in the they can produce a substance which is sometimes more harmful, deadlier and more problematic for example, ozone as I said all the time when you talk about the troposphere ozone is a pollutant. Ozone should not be there because we do not need ozone in uh, troposphere, but it is formed. So none of the processes generally by and large 99 percent processes do not release any ozone, but ozone is formed where in the atmosphere troposphere and that becomes a problem. Okay? And this is a worldwide problem. In fact, <coughs> lots of efforts are on to, to, to measure and to be able to map the ozone you know through the uh, satellite and NASA is trying very hard then which areas are more polluted in terms of the ozone where the ozone, more ozone is formed and things like that. And then because ozone can damage the human animal plants and buildings okay? uh, well not necessarily the buildings, but in some sense you know like indirectly it can produce it, it can help produce uh, um, uh, acids which can destroy the buildings as well. Indirect effects, the climate change system we know it is affecting can affect the climate, both the particles can affect the climate, the, the gases can affect the, the climate. For example, methane we all know the effect on methane in terms of the greenhouse gases. Okay. We can also know that some of the particles are formed in the atmosphere that we saw how the VO volatile organic carbon uh, compounds you know like because of their vapor pressure are high, super saturated and it tends to fact some of the atmospheric reaction can also form the particles not only the through the organic route we can also form the particles from the inorganic roots and that is why sometimes we wonder that while we are controlling lots of pollution at the source of the particulate matter we are cleaning the chimneys, but still we find the particles to be there and those particles are many of the particles are formed in the atmosphere from the precursor gases. Okay. So, we control the particle, we are very happy our chimney looks fine and they say well we, we have control, but when we go and measure outside we still get the particles that had originated or that had not originated, but they were formed in the atmosphere from the gases those has or those had originated from the source. So, that is little thing. Uh, <coughs> so, unless we understand this the mechanism, the science, the chemistry we cannot manage the air pollution. So, there are indirect effects also sometimes so much of the nitrogen species can also be downwashed and it can affect the even the ecosystem and can add to the eutrophication. <coughs> With this background let us get to something more serious. Okay. These are the issues we somehow we should be able to answer once we know 
the chemistry and how has the atmosphere composition changed over the time? What is the human contribution to this change? Because something occurring naturally, there is little we can do about that. Because this, the, the sizes of nature's operation sometimes can be very large and we have no control. For example, something is changing because of the volcanic activities. What can we do? I mean, there is nothing that we can go and stop volcano. But something what we do, we can certainly control that and we should try to control that. Okay? Because the natural sources can also be interesting. Some of the, you remember the, uh, the, the presentation from Dr. Ravi Kant, uh, what was his name, last name I forgot. Potter, yes. And he did say how the, pollu uh, how the uh, trees can pollute in terms of the organic va vapors and organic things that can come out. And you remember that he also said those vapors in presence of seeds like ammonium nitrate, sulfate would produce more particulate, right? Do you recall that? Okay. So, um, nature can also play and sometimes to handle nature could be difficult. What is the human contribution? How will the atmospheric composition change in, in future? How the atmospheric composition change affect ecosystem, economies and the quality of life? You know, like that can be another thing. But we will stay more or less with the science, but the implication of science is essentially to answer the questions that are being raised here. Okay. <coughs> Atmospheric chemistry fundamental, we know about the atmospheric composition, the basic ingredients of atmospheric chemistry, very important to understand as to what happens, chemical reaction in the atmosphere, we have to, re we have to understand chemical reaction kinetics, we have to understand uh, the conditions under which things can ha ha happen, temperature is very fundamental to many of the reactions. The the temperature is important, the humidity is important and above all these things, what do you think is important? Where is all the energy that will come from to break and to you know like we need energy all the time and then energy comes from the sun. Okay? The sun will bring lot of energy. So, you will see we will talk a lot about the sun's energy that is coming in. In fact, the atmosphere in terms of the pollutants could look very different in the day, in the night it could be different. And on the day when it is very heavily overcast and you are not getting enough of the sun and you may find the atmosphere look very different. Okay? And so that is since if you know the knowledge, if you have the science with you, then you can explain these numbers. Okay? So that is what is very important to understand the science. This is something we did last time. We tried to define the uh, <coughs> uh, ppm by volume that is the 10 to a minus 6 mole per mole of the gas versus the uh, air and PPV will be you know the nanomoles per mole and this is the picomoles per mole that is will be the PPT that is parts per trillion that we had done last time. So, we will quickly skip this thing go on to the something else. And now <coughs> at least these are the things which we will talk. Let me again tell you things are far more complicated and the, the number of reactions that happens in the atmosphere can run into thousands. Okay? And some people who try to understand the system, they want to model it. Because you see, why we model the things? Because it is impossible for us to measure everything. It is impossible for us to have such a system that can measure everything. Whereas, if you can model it, you can model it everything as function of time, how the things are changing, what will happen at 9 o'clock, what will happen at 9.15 and what will happen in the evening 5 o'clock. So, we'll uh, we can model it. So, but basic things which are the important things that we will discuss in this course uh, at some point or other are uh, these things that we will discuss. Ozone we understand. So, sources as I have been repeating again and again in troposphere ozone is always a secondary pollutant. So, ozone is not created generated from the primary sources. You will not find ozone by and large from any chimney that it comes out. It is formed in the atmosphere. And who is the, uh, the main player okay, of the impact is UV, of course this is UV protection, but then for the ozone formation again what is important is UV that we will see probably today in the class. We also have methane emission, generally again methane is not so much emitted by our uh, industrial processes by and large not so much, but then we have the wetlands, we have the uh, you know the animals and uh, well, there could be leakages, the animal uh, waste that will produce methane constantly through the biodegradation. You all know about that. Methane is a very serious uh, greenhouse gas. How many times more uh, uh, 
greenhouse impact the how much how many times more potential than uh, co2 16. 16 times yes that's correct that's correct 16 times has higher potential than the uh, co2 See, the methane is that gas which is uh, transported, CNG, so there could be leakages, okay, right, because we have the CNG is a, a big way now, right, so, and the methane is transported from lots of places from one end to another one, so there could be leakages, that is the pipe losses, okay. We also have the NOx problem that I discussed with you, again let us quickly take uh, recap, what is NOx, NO plus? What is what is largely at source, at the emission source, NO, and what is largely in the atmosphere? What do we breathe? NO two. Very good. Okay. We also have <coughs> uh, the CO that that is formed. That's fine. Toxic, you know. And it, it also you see again and again you see that the OH thing appearing here. So we should see that how OH will play a very significant role. Of course, OH again is not as a thing which is emitted from the source. It is formed in the atmosphere, and it's we all know even from our water chemistry OH is hugely, hugely reactive okay? and its concentrations are very low actually. It's sometimes you will be wonder what are the units we, we, measure, we, we normally measure the OH in. Moles per liter uh, will be the concentration will be very, very low 0 0.0000 something. It is interestingly sometimes can be measured in number of uh, molecules for example, 10 to the power 12 molecules per liter. You know. So that is low concentration, but the role which it plays is very, very vital. Okay. So uh, CFC we all know about the CFC business and then ozone photolysis, in fact some ozone is formed. Okay and then uh, this, uh, the OH is again formed from the ozone synthesis we will see, but this can also clean the atmosphere, so there are positive things that will become more clear to you. VOCs, VOCs volatile organic compounds, okay. sources fuel thing and then they are also, it is very funny that you see here that this can also lead to formation of ozone and we will see it sounds very, very funny, but then it can also lead to from the ozone. SO2 again fuel combustion volcanoes, aerosol formation, okay, heterogeneous chemistry and this can also lead to acid drain if you recall the impact of SO2. But you see the part interesting part is that SO2 can also be responsible for aerosol formation. So if you want to control aerosol, okay, you not only need to control the aerosol at the source but maybe you need to control SO2 as well. Okay. So SO2 control will not be determined by the SO2 concentration in the ambient air for the people to breathe. SO2 concentration may be in the, uh, in the emission may be controlled or regulated by the particulates that we need there. So look at the complexity of the thing and some of the things we will learn. And NOx similarly HNO3 is the, 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 the sole, almost sole source or HNO3 in the atmosphere is from the NOx reaction. Some of the HNO3 is released from the nitric acid plants also, okay, but that is not so this thing, because that will be a very local phenomena. Ammonia is very interesting pollutant, a very, very interesting pollutant. Again, this comes from the livestock, okay. how from the livestock? How ammonia will come from the livestock? Waste, waste degradation and things like that. And the fertilizers like the moment you use urea, some of the ammonia can escape from there. And then this interesting part with ammonia is that they can neutralize both HNO3 and sulfuric acid, but they also add to the formation of particles. How? H2SO4 and ammonia, what it will, will it form? Ammonium sulfate and ammonium sulfate are the particles. Uh, H2SO4 was in the vapor phase or in the mist form, this was in the gaseous phase and then you, what you got as a result in the atmosphere is the particulate pollution. So that is a little tricky there, ammonia issue. So this will little give you the idea, let us get into the chemistry now and uh, well this is something we all know, I mean I have talked about this, the source, transport, reaction, transport and then there has to be sinks, sinks has to be, well, that is how 
these the things get out of the system. If the, there were no sinks, these uh, pollutant levels and the, uh, the secondary pollutant will continue to rise. Okay, there will be endless thing and then the survival of the people and the things will completely stop. So, this is very important to understand the sinks also, but let us get into some more specific things. Okay, that is atmosphere can also be a catalyst that I told you. Uh, did I give you an example of how SO2 was formed to H2O4? Water. Yes, uh, anyone remember how sulfuric acid is produced in the sulfuric acid plant? No, it does not matter if you do not remember, but what we do is we take the sulfur, burn it, make sulfur dioxide, then oxidize SO2 to SO3. Okay, that is what is this, and then we, once we oxidize to SO3, how do we oxidize? It is a catalytic oxidation of SO2 to SO3. Conversion of SO2 to SO3 is not easy. Okay, so in the sulfuric acid plant, once you are producing SO2, okay, you supply oxygen, no doubt about it, but provide, okay, a catalyst. I do not know now if you can recall vanadium pentoxide is an oxida, uh, as a catalyst to oxidize SO2 into SO3. Okay. You need to balance this of course, which you can do okay. and then so once you have this SO3 okay, plus SO3 is reacted with water or absorbed in the water and you get. And this is what why I mean is a as a catalyst. Almost identical reactions can occur in the atmosphere, okay? Because you have the SO2, okay? Levels will be extremely low. You have the SO2. You may also have the catalyst present in the atmosphere. That is vanadium pentoxide. Where does the vanadium come from? Well, there could be many sources, but almost all diesel, okay? almost all diesel or the fuel oil, okay, it contains a vanadium because it is all extracted from the ground, the vanadium goes in there and vanadium, I do not know what is the, what is the atomic weight of molecule, uh, vanadium any idea? It must be pretty heavy, I am not sure. I mean. so it is heavy, so when you do the um, distillation, okay, the vanadium continues to be at the lower end. It does not go out and does not appear uh, this thing. So, you have the fuel oil, the furnace oil, the vanadium will be there, vanadium will find the source in the atmosphere, SO2, this, this is one of the routes. There are many other ways you can form the sulfuric acid. So, the catalysts play an important role and our atmosphere is oxidizing in nature because we have lots of oxygen there, right. And uh, what else? This is one route that. So, role of the catalyst cannot be undermined, okay. So, that is what is being seen. So, just gave you a little example that how sulfuric acid could be formed. The other ways also for sulfuric acid to be formed, but one of the important thing is the oxidation to SO3 and then to react to the water and this this reaction is almost instant. Okay. SO3 is more or less unstable, it quickly wants to react. Okay. All right. <coughs> that is again reaction, the reservoir what is happening. Now, this slide we do not want to keep for long, you all know about this that well there is a combustion of the fossil fuel and biofuels, cars, heating, industry, forest and this uh, so on are burning. That also you see the, the, the lot of work onto the natural forest fire and that also produce a lot of uh, trace compounds, leakage in the evaporation that we have discussed, agriculture as sometimes you just wonder as to why agriculture, agriculture can be a serious source of um, emissions of uh, not only the, uh, the dust with the tractor and the people working, but also they are spreading the um, urea, so ammonia comes out, you are spreading the pesticide and many of the pesticides are volatile and as a result they you, you, are, you are heavily spreading it out. Uh, I do not know in, if you were there in Anubha's uh, presentation and then things can be volatile and you are putting it onto the flow uh, onto the on, onto the um, uh, in the field and then it can just become volatile and then it can again make the particulate or it can stay in volatile phase. So, agriculture people are this, this is the latest thing people are talking a great deal 
about the air emissions and air pollution from the agricultural activities. Plants and soil can also sometimes give out this, this thing, volcanoes, oceans, okay, atmospheric chemical reactions. So, there can be source of the trace compounds that we get. But let us see one of the some of the major issues. Okay. So, we need to quickly take the recap of the chemistry part. You have done it all, but we will have a very simple uh, reactions to 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 re recap the things. We all know the gas phase reactions can happen with between two compounds and these things the more reversible thing you can write it in this form and then this. What is M? What else it can be? Okay, that is one part. What else it can be? See what happens when you are having some reactions, okay? Then a lot of energy that is created, okay? Vibrational energy, the temperature energy. So somebody should be there to absorb that energy, okay? And that part is generally largely done by nitrogen and oxygen. So we we should not forget that some energy comes out, okay? And suppose this reaction was, um, let me tell you, for example, if the reaction was A plus B equals to C plus D plus heat, okay? Okay, let's talk about that. Reversible reaction C plus D plus heat. For example, this thing can happen, right? Most of the our reactions are oxidizing in nature. So, what will happen if the heat is there? Okay, if I don't remove the heat, then what can happen? Reverse reaction, yes. So, I'm C plus D is being formed, okay. And then suppose there is no one to take care of the heat, it might just go back. Okay. So, what we are assuming is that for this reaction which might happen sometimes, we also can have like this is one kind of energy, there could be another kind of the energies which can be there. So, there should be someone to absorb the energies or there can be and it can be catalyst as well. Okay. Good. Sir, or M will be some chemical, some gas, some something that can absorb. Okay. For example, nitrogen, the oxygen largely that does not change so much in composition, but they are able to absorb the energy. Okay. Let us uh, <coughs> what is different? Somebody tell me what is different in homogeneous and heterogeneous reactions. Same phase that is a key word. So, gas versus gas is a homogeneous reaction liquid versus liquid is homogeneous, solid versus solid is homogeneous and then the heterogeneous. So, we should all understand that well there could be different kind of this thing and then it could be heterogeneous, it could be surface reactions, it could be the bulk reaction where the things are meshing into the another one and the reactions can happen. This little what you will recall that you have done it all in your high school, but still we need to have a look onto this one. Okay. Think of the reaction. Okay. A plus B plus C plus D and then I can uh, the write the rate of change of the concentrations of the compound with time. And fortunately here the, the co all coefficients are 1, right. So, you can write the rate of change will be d A will be equal or, or decrease in d A will be equal to decrease in d B and that will be equal to Decrease in DC? Increase in DC. Okay, all right. You are following. Okay, so then you can DC and DT is the one which will be on the plus side as you can see. And we will use uh, this concept and then also these, these reactions and the real concentrations of A, B, C and D will depend on the largely on to the recall rate constant, equilibrium constant and that sort of thing you all know about that. Uh, what if uh, the uh, the coefficient was not one? See here the coefficient. The coefficient is one here. One a one b one c one t. But how do we write that? No, no. I'm 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 just talking about this one only. The rate of I'm not talking about the final concentration. Rate of change of a. B, C, D. So, the number of moles are 
So 1 by A dA dt equals to 1 by B minus of course dB dt equals to 1 by C dC dt 1 by D dB dt. Okay. Do not forget that. So all your little thing what you have done before. In general I am saying the change in the C. Okay. C there here will depend on to the how much is the quantity I have in terms of A and B times the rate constant. You all know about that. Okay. K is called the reaction rate constant or rate constant. K often depends on to the the temperature and uh, and the pressure. What what are the units of K? One second. Absolutely, order of the reaction and the products you have order of the reaction basically. So, it is not that was the reason I asked you little fundamentals, but we need to be very clear about these things okay. and we will utilize this uh, very quickly as, as we go by and uh, okay. so we will you, you will apply some of these concepts okay. and uh, so we also need to understand a little bit about the Cauchy or pseudo steady state situation and that will become clear to you about the steady state. Uh, for example, the several reactions proceed via the formation of an activated complex and that is decides what is going to happen which needs to get rid of, of the excess energy in order to stabilize or quenching of this one. For example, O plus O2 you have an acid oxygen it can form the in the excite state ozone it must shed off the energy to someone to become at the ground state. Okay. The rate of equation for the intermediate complexes is given by and uh, now you see here what I am trying to write is the rate of change of concentration of O3 in the excited state. Okay. So, we have to see in what way O3 is formed, which reaction is forming the O3 in the excited state, this one or this one? The first one because this is the product okay. and here I am destroying it. Okay. So, write the, state, write the concentration in terms of the change in the concentration okay. that is input minus output that is a change. Okay. This is input if I am saying K1 O times O2 minus K1 O3 why this? Right. This can also go this way right fair enough plus plus or minus I do not know again minus again this reaction also will destroy the reaction. So, the you should learn this little simple things you need to learn that how you can write these equations okay. simple things, but it, it gives you big results okay. so that you can write here and then <coughs> Uh, the lifetime of the complex 3 is sufficiently short, okay. then it can be called pseudo steady state. Okay. It is being formed and it is being destroyed. Okay. Okay. So, in that case if I can take this equals to 0, then I can find out what will be the ozone concentration in the excited state. Does it mean something is being destroyed quickly and something is being like rate of generation and rate of destruction is the same. Does it mean the concentration is 0? No, that is very important thing. Concentration is time independent or time invariant, right? Is the statement okay? Concentration is not changing with time, but it has concentration, right? So, those things which are quickly destroyed and the same rate is being produced, same rate they are being destroyed is what we take that assumption and that that is called as a quasi or pseudo steady state and that is what we apply the concept of pseudo steady state and then you can find out the concentration. Look we understand the reaction and if you need to know this concentration with little knowledge of chemistry that we will be able to say in the atmosphere what is happening. Okay. Any question? Sir this like concentration and time dependence sir this relation is only for short uh, short duration reaction for any reaction. So, but suppose that if we take uh, plot of concentration versus time like it would be changing per unit time or like changing increasing or decreasing with time. If that is the case you your function your, your the, the function mm -hmm. 
will be we should represent that T concentration like in in um, mostly water pollution air pollution we say things steady state uh, things you know uh, decrease with the uh, with first order reaction so it can go like this okay so it's a, then you are writing simply all you know about that is right okay suppose this was like this okay then obviously the dc dt the function of this curve will be different that's all it need to be but it may not be very easy to write function that is a different thing okay but then you should be able to write dc by dt is is constant and some function of c ct that's correct that's all you need to do. Okay, <clears throat> and don't forget that we all all referring is moles per per volume. Okay, moles to specify this thing. The moles is there. So there's a little chemistry that we talked about, and uh, so let's try, and then we go to a real problem. Okay, with this background. Okay, uh, most of the reaction that we'll discuss will be driven by the photo dissociation, and photo dissociation is very simple. Photo dissociation means you have the UV that is energy and that is able to break the things okay, in simple terms. The energy of a photo, uh, photon absorbed uh, by an atmosphere molecule is transformed to the breaking of a chemical bond so that the molecules are dissociated okay, and form something else. For most molecule photo dissociation requires radiation in the UV range that is below 380 and uh, molecule photo dissociation requires radiation in the UV range. So the sunlight it stops some UV radiation and but some UV radiation still reaches us okay and that is what will trigger many of the reactions. You all know about that that where the energy issues are there and how is how the energy and the wavelength related? More energy there are you sure inversely. Or, or okay inversely or if I take in terms of frequency? And what is the constant of uh, proportional proportion? Planck's constant. Okay. <coughs> but what happens is this is where most of our atmospheric photo oxidation or photo dissociation takes place in with the help of this visible range, and that too largely less than 380 nanometer. Okay. What we will do is uh, well, we have the time. Let's let's do this one. Okay, for example, if you have ozone, okay, so for this thing, H2 you can break down to O plus O2. It can be broken down by the two different wavelengths, and then it can produce O plus O2. This O can be in the ground state, and if you have this thing, this thing O can be in the excited state. Okay, so you see here, if I have shown here, this O is what in the ground state, right? From here. You see O and O, this O can react with oxygen to bring back the ozone to you. Okay. But if it is in excited state, because with this tenometer, if it is in excited state, okay, do you see this reaction is reversible or non reversible? It is non reversible. Okay. So I can never back, I can never get back ozone if from this route if my energy is coming in this range or this nanometer you see here once i get this thing okay i'm not going back to ozone very interesting thing okay and you have to observe that and keep in mind okay unfortunately you have to understand only i mean uh, we are not getting a great deal in the this thing so there must be somebody to react with the excited ozone form formation is important for the formation of oh radicals you recall in the beginning of this 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 class I was emphasizing OH, OH, OH and really OH is very, very important. And you just I'm just giving you a little idea where the OH is coming from. There are other sources of OH as well, we'll see. But you see here the OH came, okay, it can um, react with the water, water vapor in the atmosphere and the uh, and in the conditions 
or the humidity temperature that what we get in the atmosphere. So we can get the OH radicals. When do you think the OH radicals will be high in the atmosphere? In the daytime and we have lots of H news, right? Okay. So here you get the H, you can make the OH radicals here. Okay, no problem there. So <coughs> quickly tell me, okay, where is the energy more? Here or here? Hmm? P twenty. So if energy is more, I'm likely to get more. More excited, more OH radicals. Okay, energy is more, and then also depends on the the temperature. Why temperature is more? Then you have higher. This one. Why? Because the energy will be higher at the high temperature. Body radiates at the high temperature, then the it it will radiate more in the smaller range, right? If you all recall. So this is what is the thing that O1, this thing. So you have the higher temperatures in the daytime and then you will have the more O1, uh, the excited uh, atomic oxygen and then you will get more and more of OH. Okay. And so therefore what I can tell you is a chemistry or atmospheric chemistry will be different for us, it will be different for America, it will be different for North, for example Norway. Okay. Because we get our temperatures are high and so our radiation, our, our, H, our H news will be more and our chemistry will be entirely different. So we need to study the, uh, the chemistry and the science okay, and then apply to a local condition. Always remember the science is universal whereas the application of science is local or regional. Interesting statement that science is universal but the application of the science okay, is regional or local. Okay. So you see here we, our, our things in, in India for example will be very very different than what can happen which is very evident because as news will be different that what we are getting the energy and so there will be variation between winter and summer. Okay. There could be variation in the monsoon period when you have lots of overcast conditions. Okay. So unless we know the signs, okay, we, will, we won't be able to tell what is happening to ozone, what is happening to the OH radicals. Okay, let's go down. So in the same ozone, uh, it is split to oxygen. Uh, Excited oxygen and the ground depending on the radiations that you are getting. Okay, it can both routes can happen. The first route, this ground oxygen will can react back with the oxygen to produce ozone again. Okay, when it is producing ozone again, then it is like kind of null situation. Nothing is happening basically. Production destruction, production destruction. But when the second route, where you have the more energy with less than 320 nanometers wavelength, it breaks to ozone, which is an excited state plus O2, and this excited atomic oxygen and O2 will not react to produce ozone back. So this one becomes somebody should take on to that. Who takes on is the water is one of the things. The other can also take, and that will produce OH radical. In fact, one atomic oxygen molecule in excited state will produce two moles or two molecules of OH. Okay. All right. Any question? Okay. Then let's proceed. And we are talking <coughs> the same thing. Pseudo steady state for uh, uh, for excited state of O and i I've now the, I'm not using K's. I'm getting the J. Many books use J. Quickly see from the notes or uh, the earlier figure and make sure that I have written here correctly. Just spend about let us say 10 seconds and then let us see if I have written correctly or, or maybe wrongly. Reversible reaction for what I need is O1 D. Was any reaction reversible for O1 D? No. So it can react and produce react with water and get destroyed O and D right and O and D can also destroyed by this route. Okay. So again pseudo steady state put this equal to 0. You can even find that what will be the concentration of uh, excited atomic oxygen given the ozone concentration okay. given this concentration of this and this and sometimes this we take as a constant okay. and can be taken as a constant. And then you see that you can find out yourself. this equation will not be so easy to solve because you also have this in here. 
okay it's not a simple equation to solve okay right okay but you can solve this one and then the same now i want to come to the real atmosphere there was so far the background part of it pay attention now the idea of showing this one is not that we can go a little fast okay this is what is happening really in the atmosphere okay we know that we are finding we are getting a lot of no2 where the no2 has come no2 has essentially come from no okay no2 it can it is very photosensitive more than most of the compounds okay so the kind of uh, this is the range which is not filtered by the ozone layer and still reaches the ground okay because ozone layer is not filtering all uv radiation right maybe you'll recall that it, it it can stop some but it cannot stop some so this thing can reach this kind of energy this kind of photon can reach and then this is specifically sensitive to this thing and then this can be broken down to no plus o okay this o okay can react with o2 to form the ozone okay what is this o is tell me is it excited state or it's a ground state ground state okay because then only it can react with o2 if you recall the first this thing and then produce ozone okay this is basically equation 1 and 2 okay are the fundamental equations to form the ozone in the atmosphere okay we are talking a great deal uh, atmosphere means I, i beg your pardon don't forget that we are discussing now troposphere we are not in the stratosphere we are not in the stratosphere we are all not, don't don't miss me on that point because we are not we are talking just about the troposphere and not about the stratosphere or the higher atmospheres so this is is the basic fundamental equation okay that is how you will constantly get ozone from here okay m which is n2 ro2 are the another molecule that absorb the excess vibrational energy and thereby stabilizes the ozone molecule that's formed there are no significant sources of ozone in the troposphere that's again and again so <coughs> by and large whatever ozone is formed in the troposphere is governed by equation equation by 2 okay by equation 2 okay and i would add i'll agree with this one and largely with equation 1 because almost no other photochemical reaction produces the the ground state of oxygen so see the, the what what a fantastic i uh, would fantastic or some fundamental role played by no2 okay so and then this becomes very vital and this become very basic unit so equation 1 and 2 are very important so let's write the chemistry and whatever we have learned we'll try to build a model on this one Okay. let's try to build the model now apart from this let's not forget we may also have the no in the atmosphere we have of course we have the power plants we have the automobiles running in and out so we have no there and this can also react with ozone to form the no2 and back to oxygen okay this no2 is again available this one so it's more like appears to be more like the closed things and it might be a steady state situation okay let's write the uh, the chemistry and kinetics about this one let's write about no2 okay where is no2 formed first talk about the losses of no2 dc by dt equals to minus kc we environmental engineers understand this thing you know fundamentally you know like <laughs> dc by dt equals to minus kc this is something like right? dc by dt is minus kc that is loss observe if also the no2 is no2 being formed from reaction 3 k3 okay who is forming it ozone and no their product simple okay keep this from there okay now i can write from the nascent or atomic oxygen which is at the ground state can you see that 
uh, how it is being formed? It is being formed by the breaking of NO2 plus reaction constant is K1 NO2 where it is disappearing okay it is forming ozone reaction to K2 simple okay let us proceed further the oxygen atom is so reactive that it disappear by, by reaction 2 virtually as fast as it is formed by reaction 1 okay. So, what then what, what situation we are getting into quasi or pseudo steady state okay. So, we are getting in that situation. So, in dealing with the highly reactive species such as the oxygen atom it is customary okay which is reasonable thing to do invoke the pseudo steady state constant. So, then if it is steady state it means the change in concentration with time is 0. So, you can find out what will be the, the concentration of O which will depend on K 1, K 2, N O 2 and oxygen. Is not that thing we have done fantastic thing that we just need to measure N O 2 and N O and we might be able to say something about ozone right and how much is ozone will form and if I also want to um, have you made some mistake here? Oh, I am sorry, we are still dealing with O, okay. that will come in the next step. We have not talked about ozone by the way, my mistake. Okay. Equation 4 okay, at the steady state, okay. what was equation 4? I did not look at the screen and I kind of went ahead. Equation 4 at steady state. Okay at a steady state this becomes 0 okay. O 3 will be something very simply K 1 times N O 2 by K 3 N O right. So, that is what is written ozone K 1 K 3 N O 2 N O okay. and then this is steady state concentration ozone concentration is proportional to the ratio of N O 2 to N O because K 1 K 3 will be another constant. Okay. We now need to com compute N O 2 and N O and <coughs> they are now we have to get the N O 2 and N O and now we will do little work as to uh, modify this model. This is the what are this concentration at what time? This concentration at the steady state right at the current condition when we are assuming steady state, but let us model it. Okay. How things can happen with time and if we start with some initial concentration. See things are will trigger, you have to have something happening. Okay. Then you get to the situation. So, since we have developed the models, so we will use the model to say what are the concentration with time and what are the other steady state concentration and what will happen to N O and what will happen to N O 2. So, what we are saying here is suppose we are now starting with this one then what what we are saying is let us say to start with okay at time t equal to 0 n o was 0 n o 2 was some concentration 0 ozone was some concentration 0 okay so we are like more or less we are taking like a big chamber and in the chamber we started the reaction and start observing them so we have n o 0 N O 2 0 and O 0 initial concentrations or initial levels. Okay. Then you need to solve this one. Okay. This is what we had already written right. Okay. But then quickly there are some conditions that we need to take let us go down there. Okay. I need certain informations. Okay. Nitrogen has to be balanced. Okay. N O plus N O 2 because they are not they're, the N O uh, nitrogen is either in the form of N O or in the form of N O 2 it is not nitrate right it is not N 2 O 5 or something. So, it means mass conservation this should be true. Okay. You can also see that ozone that is change in the ozone. Okay, will totally depend completely on change in the nitrogen species, right? Nitrogen species. So with this knowledge, okay, we can 
solve the equation um, as a result you can find out the ozone it all depends you know like at steady state no doubt about it but this is what is the initial concentration you started with okay it is steady state don't forget that we have used we have we have invoked steady state conditions but we started with this picture and what is that picture at the steady state that that you can solve this one the information we have try to do this one okay try to do this one because this is important i mean it, it takes little while it is not very straightforward but then it's basically algebra nothing more than the algebra okay so you see here with all this knowledge we had i can now depending on the the, the suppose the kanpur basin i have i can see early in the morning what is the emission of no what was the no2 what was the ozone if it was there and i can try to predict the ozone concentration at steady state okay so this is this is this is suppose there was no initial ozone or no 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 was there okay then this will reduce to this okay you can see that again simple algebra again what if i had no no2 okay and i had no no what should happen if there is no no no2 cannot be formed we know from the, and if there is no no2 can ozone be formed ozone cannot be formed okay because only way the ozone can be formed remember is the photo dissociation of no2 in the range of h nu which was less than 435 or something so so if you put no2 equals to 0 in this model this is already zero i am taking okay so you put this no2 what is ozone concentration zero so this what is the fundamental thing. okay so <coughs> this modeling was done so let's have a look at the results of the model okay people run the model and things like that okay they took point 1 as no2 at the initial stage no no was taken because we know that from no2 it will be formed and then what is the ozone concentration that was predicted from the model 0.027 as with one it was produced at the 0.095 okay no theory new science is complete without having tested it on the field this is all we did from more or less from the theory when the people went out and measured when they had such kind of concentration in the atmosphere not a control situation like this okay they had such a situation in the atmosphere they knew and what the ozone levels what they got were way high were way high and then the numbers you are you getting there so in a way i'm sorry to say the model failed okay we did all our science and the failure is is it is a is a as i would say is the step towards the right direction towards the future research if you fail with your theory you don't have to be disappointed it certainly tells you that you have not understood the process okay having done everything but you see here i don't know what is written here but we can read the concentration of ozone attained in the urban and regional atmosphere were often greater than those uh, sample uh, sample calculations from the model as you see here since most of the nox emitted is form of the no and not no2 the concentration of ozone observed can be calculated accurately if the reaction governing the governed by the equation 13 only it must be concluded that the reaction other than 13 something more is happening which we have not thought of okay and this whole thing was given by a scientist called two two person hagen and smith great people they kept on publishing after 1952 lots of great papers on this field so what we'll do is we'll stop here and try to answer the question as to why our model failed and how we can rectify the model and we should be able to if these people come in 1952 they can give some answers we should be able to, at least able to say what are the ozone that will be formed here okay stop there and uh, you should you should get these slides i'm sure uh, where i will do something about it
okay stop thank you very much